America's party town on America's party night. New Year's Eve in Vegas. There's no better place to be right here, right now. Hundreds of thousands have packed the strip, and the lucky ones have an up-close view of the most anticipated event of them all. Tonight, at Paris, Las Vegas, with its famed landmark shining bright, two athletes have arrived ready for their moment. Robbie Madison has been in this spotlight before. He's gone further than anybody. Now, he revs up to go higher than anybody. It's the most dangerous jump he's ever attempted. Plus, across the strip at the Rio, an amazing comeback story. Reese Millen will try to fulfill a promise he made while broken and battered on a hospital bed a year ago. Tonight, two extraordinary athletes take their ultimate test pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It all unfolds next. Robbie Madison will attempt to jump onto the Arc de Triomphe. It is a replica of one of the most famous monuments in the world. And the Arc here in Vegas stands 96 feet tall. So that means Robbie will have to jump up and land on a 10-story building. And the toughest part may be getting down. Now, we have you covered with two locations, four reporters. Nichelle Turner and Cam Steele are at the Rio for Reese's backflip. Jamie Little is right here on ground level to cover Robbie Madison. And with a view high above the strip, unlike anyone else, is Tess Sewell, who is Robbie's technical advisor, the guy who designed this course. And Tess, a lot of people are probably watching this show right now saying, I cannot believe that Robbie Madison is going to attempt to do this, jump to the top of the arc. Just how dangerous is this jump, Tess? Well, Joe, fans of the X Games know motorcycle high jumping. It's called Step Up. At the X Games, the world record is 36 feet. This jump is about three times that height. What Robbie's going to do is he's going to start down at the Las Vegas Strip. He's going to ride up to a 35-foot tall ramp. He's going to jump up about 100 feet tall, and he's going to land here on this roof, and it's only 40 feet deep. But that's the easy part. Once Rubby gets up here onto the roof, he has to concentrate and focus because now comes the jump down. And I'm gonna hang on to this thing because it's so scary. You take a look over here and you can't even see the landing. It's at least 60 feet to the sweet spot. So you ask, where is the Superman who's going to attempt this feat? Well, he's 10 stories below me with our very own Jamie Little. Well, Tessa, to think that it was all Robbie Madison's idea. He thought this up. He created it. You remember one year ago, he etched his name in the history books with the world watching. Robbie, why do it again? Why tempt fate again? I don't know, Jamie. You know, I've always just challenged myself, you know, from the first time I jumped on a BMX bike to, to last year jumping the football field. You know, it's always just been what's going to inspire me to get up early and train hard and, and live life to the fullest. And this is an idea that really got me excited all year and uh, I've been trying to hold it back but now we're here and I'm so excited to uh, to risk it all and go for the, the gnarliest jump that I've ever done. Robbie, the last 20 minutes you're walking up here, you're smiling, you're talking to Travis Pastrana and all the other athletes that are here. Are you really feeling as calm as you seem? You know, the calmness has definitely come over me. It's weird because last night I couldn't sleep at all. My heart was pounding through my chest and uh, you know, my body definitely knows that, that things could go drastically wrong here, but uh, I've been training hard and i got all my good friends from Temecula here supporting me, some friends from Australia, so it's a special night. I don't want to mess it up for anything. Robbie, we look at this behind us. I talked to you last night. You said this is the first time ever you have never practiced on a jump that you're going to do. How does that feel right now? Yeah, that's what's uh, really rocking my shell right now is knowing that I've never hit this jump. You know, it's... Uh, whether it's going to be the same as the practice or not, I don't know. So we're about to find out. And I'm now joined by a guy who knows what these two are going through right now. Rally car racer, one of the most famous motocross athletes in the world, Travis Pastrana. Good to have you with us here tonight at uh, Paris, Las Vegas. Hey, you've, uh, you've crossed over into both worlds of these athletes. Reese's peers, those that are in that side of the sport, what do they think of what he's doing tonight? Well, no, Reese is, you know, one of the world's top drivers. He's a national champion drifter. Um, you know, he's a top rally car driver. These guys are experienced, top-level drivers, and he's pushing the envelope. I mean, that's what Red Bull's all about, coming out here and trying to do stuff that's new. Man, all, utmost respect for Reese. What about considering what he went through last year? To face what knocked him out, he went through the crash, he was in the back brace for four months, but he made a promise to himself to overcome this and to get back in it. How impressed are you with that? 
Oh, very much so. I mean, you know, Reese is an amazing driver, but he has to rely on mechanics as well to get this this stunt completed. It's a backflip. No one's even thought about that. I mean, when they first did it on a motorcycle, it was like, this is impossible. He's trying it in a truck, and he's got to rely on some mechanics. He's got to go for it, and, you know, it's not 100% up to him, but he knows that he's going to do the best that he can. He's got faith in every all his equipment. Red Bull has set him up with everything that he could possibly have, and you know what? He was more disappointed last year than I've ever seen him in his entire life, and he is gung-ho and ready to, you know, push the limit. Let's get these sports out there. Let's, let's do the best that we can, and let's put this on the map. Well, Travis, talking about pushing the limits, I mean, look look behind us right here. Just look at the pitch of that ramp. When you first got here to Paris, Las Vegas, and you looked at that, what did you say to yourself? <laughs> Robbie's crazy. <laughs> No, I mean, Maddo, I mean, honestly, there's very few jumpers and riders that, that are both as skilled as Madison, Robbie Madison is, and as, as really ballsy to be able to do such an amazing stunt. I mean, you look at the, the ramp's 50 feet tall. He's got to jump another 50 feet up onto, he doesn't have much landing room, and then coming down is the scariest part. I mean, if he messes up, you know, he dies, but he has the confidence, he has the ability, and, you know, he's had the train to make this work. Well, this is a wonderful opportunity tonight for both of these sports, both of these athletes, to represent athletes like you and to take a major step forward, get a lot of mainstream attention. Do you think about the impact of what they could accomplish tonight on your sport? No, I mean, definitely. The, the weight of the world is on both of these guys. And, um, you know, Reese is the world's best at what he does. Robbie is the world's best at what he does. And it, it reflects on the sports. If these guys land it, this is huge. They know if they if they don't land it, if they mess up. I mean, they're, they're not doing stuff that, oh, you can mess up and get away with it. If you mess up, you're paying the ultimate price. So um, they both understand that. They're willing to take the risk, and they understand that they have the weight of the entire you know, alternative action sports world on their shoulders. And uh, I believe they're the best guys for the job, and I'm excited that Red Bull's given them all the opportunity to get out there. So it's going to be a great event. Travis, thanks for your time. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your night. Happy New Year to you. Well, some things in life are very easy to flip. Coins, pancakes, a TV channel, don't turn yours, but a 2,800-pound truck not so easy, especially when it's upwards of 45 feet above the ground. Here's how Reese plans to pull it off tonight. Reese will use about 150 yards to get up to that optimum speed of 35 miles an hour. He will launch from a 30-foot ramp angled at 45 degrees with a 75-degree kicker at the top. The kicker will push his front wheels up while flinging his back wheels around to rotate the entire truck around a center axis like a foosball player. Reese will only be about five feet higher than the ramp when the truck makes its 360 degree turn, but gravity and weight will cause the vehicle to hit the ground with 200,000 pounds of force with the back wheels and the axle taking the brunt of the landing. Reese Millen against the opponent that knocked him nearly out of his profession. Well, Joe, he's backed it all the way into the starting gate. I think this is going to be it. He came by and gave me the thumbs up earlier, and that is one of the signs that he is ready to go. I feel like this is it. There it is, the thumbs up for Reese Millen, trying to become the first to attempt a backflip in a truck. The scene from inside the truck. He was able to backflip, but as you saw, the landing, not a perfect success, as he is immediately being tended to by the crew. And Joe, I can tell you one thing that Reese told me prior to the jump, before getting into the truck today. The truck had been set up to jump and take off. They had never landed anywhere but in the cardboard boxes. There was no rebound dampening in the truck. So what you saw was the truck landed and bounced and then tipped over again. And what we're hoping to see here is Reese Millen emerge from this situation now 
So the backflip conducted, and there he is. He made a promise to finish what he started. But as you okay, said, Cam, the... you cannot practice that. You can practice into the cardboard boxes, but the unknown was what would happen when the landing had to be stuck on the dirt and the asphalt here in Vegas. And what a relief that must be for his wife, Presley. They were married on October 25th. She was through him thick and thin last year, four months in a double back brace. There was concern if he could walk again, let alone ever get into the truck again. A year ago, he wasn't able to walk away from that attempt. And now he joins Nichelle. Now, I just saw you say, Reese, what a bummer. Yeah, pretty much, you know. Um, I don't know, it all felt good. Maybe it just felt too good to, um, to do seven jumps in practice that were within two feet, no twist in the truck, no nothing. And to have that disappointment happen just then is, uh, I just can't put it into words. We saw that though, that flip was amazing. I mean. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing unless you drive away. Can you explain what happened? Or did, did it, could you feel something different? Um, you know, the, I, I, really, I really don't know what happened. I'd have to analyze some video. Um, the speed looked right. The, the fact that it came down at, at, at the right angle, it just had twisted to what might felt the, the driver's side, I'm not too sure. Um, and, ah, oh, <laughs> that is, it's too much effort to fall that short. Well, the fact that you're standing here, you're good, and you're talking to us, we like that. Cam Steele, what do you think? Well, I think Reese is exactly right. It looks like he went a bit off axis, a little bit of a twist to the side as he went off, the, uh, not just as he went off the top of the ramp, but when he started to come around. Let's take a look. Execution coming in. He's trying to follow the dotted line that he has on the concrete. Pops it off the top, and it looks like maybe one wheel might have hit just a little earlier. As he drops down, you can see how the off axis isn't working. Two things are working against Reese here. Let's take a look as he goes up and hits. Hard to tell from that angle, but it looks like you can see the truck is already twisting just a bit as it goes off the top of the ramp. Everything worked perfectly, it looks like, with the ramp. And let's take a look at the top. Looks like maybe he caught it just at a bit of an angle. I can't tell for sure, but the things I'm talking about being a problem is we go on board with Reese. The rotation looked perfect. The two things that he has a problem with on the landing. Because the truck is not running when he lands, it's a carbureted truck, it stops running while he's upside down. If it was running, he might have had a chance to get on the throttle and try to drive out of it as the wheel hit. Also the rebound that we talked about, a violent hit, a violent impact, but Reese able to climb out safely. And there, the look from far back, it almost looks like the right side impacts the top just a second early. And you can see the wheels were just turned to hair. Maybe he's trying to compensate at the top. A violent roll, but the truck is designed for that. Reese Millen out, able to conquer the backflip, but not able to drive away from a disappointment. And this New Zealander, I know he'll be back to try another day. Let's go over to Joe at Paris, where Robbie still awaiting his time to jump. Well, Cam, I'll tell you, you made a good point there, talking about the 200,000 pounds of force when Reese's truck hits the ground. So he was able to make the backflip, but unable to land it and ride it out successfully. And he's such a perfectionist and the ultimate professional at what he does. And you heard him say to Nichelle that it's nothing unless you drive away. And on top of the arc is Tess Sewell, the man who designed this course and understands all the risk involved. Tess, way up there, 10 stories. Tess, what is the biggest risk, this concern with the jump up to the top of the arc? Well, normally in jumps like this, one of the biggest risks is wind. And as you can see with this anemometer, virtually no wind tonight, which is uh, a great miracle for Robbie. The biggest risk for him is not having enough speed on the up, and he strikes the front of the arch. But like we've been saying all night, though it's not 
for anyone to do. The up certainly seems like the easiest thing. Infinitely tougher is going to be the drop down. If Robbie doesn't gain enough speed in the takeoff, he will fall short of his landing ramp. But if Robbie accelerates too much, he will overshoot the ramp and fall 10 stories down. Weight distribution is also critical. If Robbie leans too far forward, the bike will over rotate and send him into a forward flip. If Robbie leans too much to the rear of the bike, he will under rotate and fall backwards. All right, so we saw a lot of potential scenarios there. Tess, what's the one that really concerns you? What is most realistic that could happen with Robbie tonight? The biggest scare here is if Robbie doesn't have enough speed coming off. You can see this white line he's looking for on the carpet. If he drops too short, he's actually going to hit the flat deck, and that's going to cause him to pitch over the front. Remember, it's at least 60 feet down to go to the sweet spot here. And from the top of the arc, you can't even see the landing. Look at that Red Bull logo. That's the landing. It's barely visible. Robbie's jumping off blind. We are getting ready for 2009, just moments away as we bid 2008 farewell. Matto comes to this more prepared than ever, and what I see the difference is, Matto more focused and more tuned in than I have ever seen him before. What a showman as he wheelies down the entire length of the 200-foot run-up ramp, that in-run distance to the takeoff ramp that goes 35 feet high, 42 feet long. And now what we will see here is a few speed runs. Tess talked about that optimal speed, and he needs to get it just right. There is no room for error tonight. The bike is a Yamaha YZ250. It weighs 220 pounds. And he's hoping to take that 220 pounds and crest it at about 108 feet up in the air to get over that lift. Tess, how many speed runs do you anticipate? Well, really, it's how Robbie feels. He may do three, four, or five. You saw there, he stopped next to his mechanic, Buddy Morgan, took a look at what the radar gun said. He's really now feeling it, too, because part of riding a motorcycle at this level is it's the noise the motorcycle makes. You know when it's going the right speed. You feel it. Robbie's trying to feel it, too, but he's also wanting to check the number, so you'll see him make a few of these before he'll commit to the ramp. His parents gave him his first dirt bike, and they bought him a new one every year. He's been riding since he was four and a half years old, jumping motorcycles. You saw all the injuries that he's dealt with through the years. In fact, he made a comeback from a broken leg suffered just in May 2007. That was before that distance jump that he pulled off on last New Year's Eve. And now, Tess, we see some communication with his team. Buddy Morgan and Dane Heron. Well, Buddy looked pretty confident there. He looks happy. I mean, Buddy is the hardest working man in show business around here. He has to get that bike absolutely perfect. You have to think about the altitude. You have to think about how cold it is because it all affects the miles an hour that that bike will travel. But big smile so far on Buddy and Dane's faces. Another speed run as Robbie is trying to get it just right. Cam, we heard from Tess in terms of the optimal speed, but what about the mental preparation at this point with these speed runs? The last minute boost of confidence of knowing you have it right. How big of a factor is that? It's a huge factor. One thing, Joe, I noticed is I saw the wheelies Robbie was riding. He actually got a nose wheelie as well. Mentally, it shows you that he's tuned in, he's feeling loose, he's feeling like he's in the zone. If he's willing to work with the motorcycle, pseudo playing around, it seems like he's more tuned in and ready to go. So if you saw him doing speed runs and he had that worried look, it would, it would worry me, but seeing him loose and playing around. 
a feat that only really boyish like imagination could dream up. Now attempted by a well-prepared man who is fully aware of his dangers. Robbie Madison is saying this is it. To the top of the arc, he wants to go. as he goes to the edge of that 100-foot drop. He's checking the bike is in the right gear. You can see him there, pushing up and down on the shifter pedal. Here we go. safely to the ground, but that impact, he held on to the handlebars, and you saw it tore up his left hand, but he survived it and pulled off an amazing feat. Let's check in with Jamie Little. Jamie. Tears in Robbie Madison's eyes I've never seen before. I know there's got to be pain. That is a serious gash in his hand that clipped his uh, brake lever there. Robbie, though, let's think about what just happened here. What does this mean for you? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, that was uh, definitely a, a milestone in my life to overcome the fear that I've been dealing with. And uh, what's been going through my head is amazing. But. Uh, you know, I, I, it's hard to even bring myself to ride off the top there, but now it's all over. I'm glad I landed it, man. I, uh, hopefully that means something to some little kid out there and uh, inspires someone to go big and live their life to the max. How bad is that hand hurting right now? The hand kills. I think I broke it, and uh, definitely a gash that's gone right to the bone. So, hey, wounds heal. I proved that one before. <laughs> Robbie, earlier in the show, I talked about you, and what set you apart from stuntmen is that you were a true athlete. You have better bike skills than most people in the entire world. You just showed it. How did you save it? I know how to save that. I got to owe it to uh, my trainer for sure. You know, the, 
you know, just it's been I've been riding a motorcycle since I've been four years old, and I, those little things you can't plan for that. That's just subconscious. So, uh, you know, it's just my life, and uh, that just shows what uh, dedicating to something does. Everything you put yourself through, you put your fiance through, all your friends. Are we going to see you back here next New Year's doing something else? You know, who knows what the future holds. I'm just going to keep looking towards the uh, towards the future and just take each day and live the life to the max and. Hopefully we do something big someday. It's a huge night for Robbie Madison. He's going to get that wrapped up. I have a feeling he's going to get out and celebrate with all the fans out there. Let's take a look now at some replays. Quite a few to look at as Robbie Madison made it happen here at Paris. Let's bring in Tess and Cam. And here's the step up 10 stories. Tess, was that exactly what you guys were looking for? Picture perfect on the way up? Joe, I have to say, it was absolutely amazing when he crested over the roof. We weren't looking at the monitor, just at where Robbie landed, and he nailed it. He could not have possibly landed that thing more perfectly than he did. Another look as he crests about 108 feet up, dead center on the placement there. The 200 feet of the run-up ramp. The telemetry, as you see us able to show you that crest and then the free fall. Over five stories, well over five stories, he went down, then to the base, a hundred feet back down to the asphalt, and you saw that impact of the bike and the damage that it did to his hand, but it was able to keep control. Cam Steele, what did you think of the free fall down? Well, when he rode off the edge, of course, all of us just frightened, unbelievable. You can see as he drops off, I think he knows right away he's a little bit long, dips the back tire down to try to grab the landing as soon as he can, a little bit long as he goes off, a little too much speed, and he does a masterful job holding the bike upright, keeping it together. It would have been so easy for him to get squirrely and throw it down, but. Maddo being as strong and tough, both mentally and physically, he is able to hold together, although cutting his hand up, who knows what the injury is, but I'm sure at that moment, all I could think about was keeping the bike upright. We want to show you that point of view camera from PlayStation 3 because it is a dynamic replay of this. Here it is, point of view, watch this. The free fall down. And that impact that tore up the hands. Can you imagine being on that with that view straight down? Meanwhile, Reese Millen, who is so courageous with his backflip attempt, reacting to Robbie. And Reese and his wife Presley, so happy for their dear friend. You know, they have a dynamic relationship, they rib each other. One from New Zealand, the Kiwi, one from Australia, the Aussie. But they have such a respect and appreciation as athletes taking on these ultimate challenges. Maddo did it tonight. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.